spoilers for the 4.1 Archon quest and Nuvolet's quest. Hey guys, what's up? Aru. You know that one time I made a video about Focalore saying that we'll get Seelie or Sin Mal? Yeah, it's been a good two patches into Fontaine and I'm 90% confident that Farina is doing exactly that. And it's all happening in the most fitting region in all of Tavat. So welcome to another video about my heterochromia. Today's video is going to highlight Farina and the possibility of her having split personalities instead of a second Farina, as well as her strategy to keep the Gnosis from unwanted hands. Now seriously, this is because I wanted to use this shot of Farina and also because I can't stop making Farina related videos. So who can blame me? Timestamps below. But first, a word from our sponsor. Genshin Star! Remember that one time you bought a vision keychain from somewhere and it just gave up on being a vision? Yeah, that wouldn't happen if you bought it from Genshin Star. See, Genshin Star is actually a fan-made merchandise store licensed by Genshin Impact itself. So if you buy a vision from them, you're basically buying your vision from Celestia. Isn't that nice? Now because Christmas is coming closer, Genshin Star's Christmas Advent Calendar is not only a great choice to buy, but it's also on sale and it's running out fast. Every advent calendar includes 24 numbered doors to open from the start of December all the way to Christmas Day. And from these 24 doors, you can get visions, minifigures, trinkets like weapons, pins, keychains, stickers, lanyards, and many more. Of course, Genshin Star also has a plethora of other goodies like this monument, for example, and this mouse pad, and this... So what are you waiting for? Go and check out Genshin Star and use my coupon code ARU8017 as well as the referral link in the description for 10% off on your order. Now let's get this show on the road. Before Fontaine's release, Farina was already hinted to be quite an interesting Archon. We can thank the little bird, Nahida, for giving us that hint. She says that the god Focalore has a very unique personality, and we've been exposed to that unique personality since 4.0. Her flamboyant yet charismatic energy that often entertains and incites her audience in trials, as well as her bubbly and even low-key dumb shenanigans, that often comes back to her when accusing something wrong. Because of her eccentric behavior, Behavior, she tends to be more clumsy than she should be. But this borderline dumb personality is possibly just one side of the same coin. Most of the time, the Farina we see is the louder and deeper toned one, as well as the embarrassed and timid, and finally her defeated state. As the traveler says, a deflated balloon sort of Farina. But it's all from that side of Farina. This is often her bouncing to and from her high energy when she thinks she has the upper hand and her low deflated balloon energy when she is corrected or has no good rebuttal. This is most apparent in the trials where we see all three levels of her energy. But there's another completely different Farina that you may or may not have noticed. This is theoretically her second personality and possibly the real Farina, rather Fossilor. Now we're gonna be jumping from one possible personality to the other from here. Since this is all still speculation based on what I could see from Farina's expressions and the way she speaks. But first, this scene here. <sighs> the tea party turned out to be even more difficult than I'd imagined. Uh, uh, <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Is something the matter? If there's nothing urgent, then I shall be retiring for now. Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? So is that Farina or was that something else? I mean it sure looks like Farina but right off the bat she seems to act differently from when we usually see her. Not to mention that cold and nearly dead stare at Nouvellet when they met each other's gaze. Now her second personality I would think of is the more prim or soft yet still grand sounding Farina. Compared to her usual extravagant and showy manner of speaking, you'll notice that she sometimes speaks like Lisa in a way. This other version of Farina has a pretty impactful presence compared to the multiple other times we saw the louder 
Farina. This second Farina speaks with a more reserved tone and use of words in a more elegant manner. You'll also notice the way she uses the words quote unquote dear and oh my differently from time to time, and is more apparent in some of her conversations with Nouvellet as well as when she speaks to herself sometimes. Like this letter from Farina to Nouvellet where even Nouvellet himself was confused by. Listen to the way she uses those words in different tones and manners of speaking. Hmm, I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. <clears throat> even if the logic of the divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Fosalor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. Now, this is only one of the reasons for why she acts that way, and her tone of voice being that reason is solely based on my observations of her throughout the quests. But we also have another character who is a harbinger that displays the same difference in tone of voice. Not Arlecchino, the Tori. The Tori segments are another example of this difference in tone of voice. Take a listen. You're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise, we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis Di. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Yes. How very interesting. Can I assume that you have long been wary of me? Among all the versions of me, this segment you see now is the most selfish. If it weren't me, your idea wouldn't have worked. What did you see when you were imprisoned? You were observing me, and that's how you know I've long grown tired of their doubts and endless arguments. One's voice is higher and a bit more forgiving to Tenari, while the other is deeper voiced and more aggressive towards what he wants. The deeper toned Dottore is also more knowledgeable of who he is speaking to, considering Nahida is the god of wisdom and the knowledge of the sky is all too good information for her. While the younger Dottore seems to be a bit more careless yet cautious of Tenari, this difference in tone of voice might have also been used in Forina's case with Nouvellette and sometimes when speaking to herself. Now notice that I didn't say Arlecchino when they were having their heated debate. I mean, Farina did show it, but she only showed that other side and spoke in that other tone once Arlecchino left to talk with the travelers. She even shows Arlecchino that same cowardly and unknowing side of her when Arlecchino almost tried to kill her. And Arlecchino even says that Farina is cursed and that she isn't actually the real Archon. And her point of reference being the way the Saritsa carries herself. This says a lot considering Arlecchino is the knave. Because of her background as an actor and the leader of the House of Hearth, as well as what we know about Arlecchino in the Commedia, her role is all about acting and pretending, all for the goal of deceiving their opponents and not showing their true intentions until the last second. There's a reason Arlecchino is called Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, and it's quite interesting that Arlecchino can't sense anything from Farina. Well, apart from a quote-unquote curse. A curse that we as the player still have no clue about, by the way. But we are aware that Forina acts differently depending on the circumstances. One example is towards the end of Nouvellet's quest. If we know that Forina was cursed to not be the Archon, then how come she can send a letter like that as well as act the way she did toward Nouvellet? And how come we can find differences in her tone of voice and her manner of speaking? This either means that Forina has been feigning cowardice in front of everyone for a reason, even in the face of certain death to deceive even the most deceptive characters in the game. She's hiding something very important that she can't show even if she loses her life, or at least that Forina's life. I don't know, maybe she was expecting Arlecchino to not kill her, which is a really ballsy play if she was only pretending and was hoping or it was calculated that Arlecchino wouldn't kill her. Or, okay, or she is indeed cursed and that other half is only half controlling her at certain times, maybe even random times. But Farina 2 controlling Farina 1 in creating that letter, speaking to herself after her debate with Arlecchino, and even 
and that that stare at Nouvellet is too well timed for it to be a random personality switch. If it was random or an uncontrollable curse, then her heated debate should be a catalyst for that switch, since Farina is in a lot of pressure from Arlecchino and Arlecchino was trying to get something out of Farina. But she didn't. So I'm thinking she not only knows how to control her personality, but she's just so good at acting with that personality that no one ever notices. And everyone just assumes it as a unique personality of Farina. Now this is exactly what I expected Fontaine to be based on what we previously knew from Fauxsalor and Fontaine's title itself. Masquerade of the Guilty. Way back then, I theorized Fontaine to be this wild goose chase of something that may or may not even be there. Rather, someone that may or may not be themselves. But I was also talking about this for Fossalor, since I also thought it would be cool to have Farina coming back to and from the trials with different personalities. And we as travelers must then find out which Fossalor is the real one based on what we could find about those different versions. But back then, we didn't have this much information on the House of Hearth as well as everything that we find about Farina and and Fontaine. But now it's even more fitting since the Zani, aka members of the House of Hearth, as well as Arlecchino herself, all wear masks, quote unquote, in both the Commedia dell'arte and within the game itself. And everybody is trying to fake a personality to reach a certain goal. And the icing on that Fontaine cake is Farina and her indiscernible weird personality that even the greatest actors of the House of Hearth might not be able to figure out. A true masquerade of the guilty, if you ask me. This is probably something that the heart itself, as well as what Fontaine's story is about too. We've been getting hints of sins and how Fontaine was before with the primordial water, the meropede, and the ever so mysterious kingdom of Remoria long ago. So we might be seeing a deeper meaning to the sin that maybe King Remus might have had and what Egeria was planning before through this masquerade. Now let's move on to two places of interest that are likely related to Farina. The first is the Oratrice Mechanique Danalise Cardinal, of which Arlecchino seems to say is hoarding a tremendous amount of indemnitium, and the other is where all of Fontaine's water converges, the Fountain of Lucene. The Oratrice is this technologically advanced justice machine created by the Hydro Archon to help with the verdicts of each trial, which in and of itself is a pretty weird way to judge someone, isn't it? A machine capable of telling who is guilty and who isn't that feeds on Fontanians' belief in justice and then converts it into energy. What's more is that a voice can be heard within the Oratrice core room located below. Now, if we go by the theory that Farina is indeed a single entity with two personalities or is just pretending to have this weird personality, then the second personality being in the Oratrice is out of the question. But the Oratrice could hold something equally important, the Hydrognosis. The Oratrice was created by the Hydro Archon, who is Farina since she is a single person, but it's safe to assume that it has some part of the Hydro Archon's power, but not her other personality, at least for this narrative of Farina having a split personality off the bat. Now, it's possible that it could have been created by the god Egeria before she fell and left it with Farina to manage, similar to Ruka Devata and the Akasha system to Nahida. But from what I could understand, the Opera House, as well as the Oratress, was created after the fall of Egeria, which is about 500 years ago to 400 years ago. This is vaguely based on the ancient notes that I found in the Institute of Natural Philosophy, meaning it's likely that it was Forina who created this or allowed this to be created along with the whole idea of justice being a big part of Fontaine. And it was also likely Farina who thought Nouvellet was a good choice to be the chief justice over 400 years ago, since Egeria died 500 years ago and Nouvellet became chief justice at that same time time frame of, well, a hundred or so years after Egeria died. Such a powerful item used to create something to take care of all of Fontaine, while the Archon itself is busy dealing with the prophecy, is pretty plausible.
plausible. It's also plausible that Farina is hoarding that indemnitium in preparation for the worst. Remember, indemnitium or indemnity is basically insurance or compensation for a past relevant act. And Fontaine's prophecy is all about a sin being repaid. So Farina might be hoarding indemnitium for that exact past sin that we're kept getting told of. And only the other Farina knows what to do with all that indemnitium and this Farina can only hold off even against Arlecchino until then. Next is the Fountain of Lucene, which is connected to all the waters of Fontaine. Now, I've only seen this in a comment, but Farina's first personality is very emotional, while the Fountain of Lucene is where all the emotions and memories of Fontaine are located. We've seen from Nouvellet's story quest that he can more or less see the past through the Fountain of Lucene. Although it is a fragmented and messy past, it's still possible to see the past somewhat. Not only that, we also have Farina's emotions within the fountain. Novelette's mission is to understand humanity and himself as a human-born dragon sovereign. And it was Farina's message for Nouvellet to do just that. Now, what if, similar to Nahida's power over everyone's dreams, Farina could see all and possibly have power of Fontaine's past and emotions as well as thoughts through the entirety of Fontaine's waters. If this is true, then it's likely that Farina already knows what is happening with the prophecy, the primordial waters, and the rising sea level. She is, of course, the Hydro Archon. But a comment in my video says that all the waters of Fontaine might be the Hydro Gnosis itself, spread around. Since Fontaine waters have a high sensitivity to Hydro and could hold emotions and memories of everyone in Fontaine, which is quite similar to how Oceanids work and is also a good fit to the first tier of Egeria. And surprise, surprise, Farina has a lot of tier motives on, well, herself. She could be the first tier of Egeria who created all the other Oceanids. But if we take the curse Arlecchino speaks of to be real, which is also likely, then this could be the primordial waters mixing with Fontaines, which has already been happening since I don't know, 500 years ago. And the result of that is something similar to the tainted Hydro Eidolons. And the Gnosis that was given to Farina after Aegirius' fall, she used to create the Oratrice and construct the Opera House, of which also has many tier motifs, and is possibly hoarding the purest Hydro and Farina's power through the belief of justice. So maybe all of Fontaine's waters is Farina segmenting herself just like an Oceanid can. And just like an Oceanid can lose power and in extreme cases, intelligence, the same might have happened to Farina. Gods losing their memory and power has been a common trope in Genshin's lore. Similar to Goba and Marcosius, Rukadevata and Nahida and dare I say, Easteroth and Paimon. But in Farina's case, she might have expanded all that power to keep Fontaine's prophecy from happening while still keeping her memory in check. And the result of that could be the Farina that we see today, the Oratress of Justice, and the Hydrosensitivity of Fontaine's Waters. And there we go, another in-depth look at Fontaine's characters. Comment below, will there be five Farinas or Farina just doesn't exist at all? Now, I'm on the boat that there's actually two or maybe even three Farinas because we get more waifus that way. But a split personality Farina or a really smart Farina just acting the way she does is equally cool and interesting. It's like talentless Nana or Danganronpa if you watch those shows. Everyone is hiding their true self until the last second basically. Which I'm all for and would love to see where this story goes. Anyway, the next video is gonna depend on what I like making even though I haven't continued with that old world video. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you to Genshin Star for sponsoring this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah? Like on if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Toodaloo!